Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another Inventor tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is going to come in two parts. Uh, the first part is doing the drawings and we're going to draw all the parts that we need in one file and then export them out because in the second tutorial we're going to look at the assembling those parts and creating motion constraints. So let's jump on in and see where we end up. So here we are, I've loaded straight into a new part file. I'm going to start a new two dimensional sketch and I'm going to start it on my horizontal XZ plane. Just rotate it around so it tops up. Uh, straight away I'm just going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to draw it from the, uh, set, the center point out. Uh, we'll lock onto the origins so it will draw from there and we'll just draw a any size rectangle and we'll constrain it with a couple of dimensions um, leaving them as they are at this moment in time. Uh, once we're happy finish the sketch and we'll extrude it and uh, we will extrude it to uh, we'll do 20 millimeters. Uh, once we're happy, click OK. And we now need to create a two dimensional drawing on um, one of the faces. So I'm going to cr create a plane on that face to start off with at uh, zero millimeters from the face. And then I'm going to start a two dimensional sketch on that face. Uh, we already have uh, the center point projected. Um, what I want to do is I want to project the geometry of the top edge. That's going to be important to us. And I'll just draw a construction line uh, from the center point of the rectangle uh, up directly up to the uh, projected line. Um, and I'll make it a construction line by right clicking and turning it into a construction line. Uh, what we'll do now is uh, we will draw a shape that we want and then we will constrain it around these points. So I'm going to draw it up here. Uh, you could draw it on this line if you wish, but I I'm just going to draw it up here. So I'm going to draw uh, two lines. And then I will join those with an two lines together as an angle and then we will just constrain it from there. Uh, I know there's plenty of other ways of doing this. It might be a bit quicker, but it's just about practicing uh, using dimensional physical constraints. So we're going to uh, constrain this model. So I want to constrain these two center points to be vertically above each other. So I'm going to use my vertical constraint. I'm going to find the center point of the top line and the center point of the bottom line. Um, I'll dimension them as well. We can adjust this later then. Um, I will dimension the angle. And I will make uh, the opposite angle the same as the first angle. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually going to show as a driven angle. So we'll cancel that. The reason it was driven because obviously these are set measurements and therefore it determines the uh, angle, the two angles. Uh, what uh, one new way of dimensioning stuff? If I I, I could show you now is uh, when you dimension this particular line here. Um, if it doesn't come up as the aligned so it's actually in a line with the the line itself um, it can do quite often depending on the complexity of the drawing if you right click uh, you get the, the various different options that you can use so you can do a vertical so it will now just measure the vertical height you could go back to the aligned um, or you could do the horizontal uh, so very quickly you can change it to uh, create the measurement that you're after 
So we've done the dimensions that we need and well now you'll see that it's not gone black showing it's fully constrained because we need to constrain the model to a fixed position and if our fixed position is going to be the intersect of this uh, construction line with the projected edge of the uh, rectangle that we just extruded. So we will uh, do a point constraint, so a, con uh, wait, a coincident constraint. We'll select the point that we want to constrain and link it to the point that we want to constrain it to and uh, we're, that's fine, we can now finish the sketch. We will then extrude the sketch, we'll extrude it through the object um, and our distance we will go through all and it's a cut option uh, for our output. Uh, this will mean that uh, because it's gone through all, if we adjust any of the measurements for the size of the actual rectangle then it will keep the uh, uh, this cut out all the way through even if we adjust the dimensions. So we'll click OK and we'll now start a, another plane on the adjacent face at zero millimeters from the edge. Um, what I want to do first is I'll just go back into this uh, 2D sketch um, and I will uh, select all the components of it and copy them uh, so because I want this exact shape on the other face. So if we now start a two-dimensional sketch on this uh, work plane 2, we'll do exactly the same. We will uh, project the top edge. We will draw a line from the center point vertically upwards and we will turn that line into a construction line. Uh, what we'll do now is uh, I'll just do control V and uh, the object that we were we copied is now appeared uh, uh, on our, our plane and again we will go to co coincidence constraint on the point and link it directly to the projected point as well. That didn't quite work. Let's uh, let's do that again. Coincidence constraint, point to point. There we go. Um, and uh, and we'll finish the sketch. And we'll do exactly the same. We'll extrude that sketch through all and cut it in. Click OK. So what we'll do now is we're going, we're going to make this mechanism that one, one slides up through this section and one slides across through this section and they're attached by a handle. So we want to do these two sliding objects. Um, we can start another two dimensional sketch. Well, actually we've already got the drawing. So if we um, make the vi drawing visible uh, and we extrude that now and we'll extrude it uh, 20 mil, yeah 20 mil looks fine and we'll extrude it as a new object. I'm aware that this obviously is a um, interference fit but for what we want it's perfectly uh, usable. Um, we will click OK um, and we can now uh, hide our sketch again. Um, we could draw this one if we wanted to but um, we don't actually need to for this. Um, because in the assembly we'll just copy this one uh, and obviously because all the dimensions are linked and the same uh, it will also move in here. So the next thing I want to do is create a hole in the top of this uh, slider. So I'm going to start a two-dimensional sketch on it at zero millimeters from the top surface. I'm going to then uh, uh, sorry, start a two-dimensional sketch on there. Um, I will do some geometry projecting um, because I want to draw a construction line again. This will help us um, in a second when we want to find the midpoint. And I'm going to put a point on the midpoint because I'll use the... Uh, there it is. 
I'll use the whole function rather than doing an ex circle and extruding it. I'm going to use the whole function in the 3D um, area. So I'll just finish the sketch. And now I'll use the whole function. Um, I'm only going to go dip down to uh, 5 mil deep. So that's 5 mil diameter. I'll go 5 mil diameter and um, I will go. I will change the dimension. I'll give it a flat bottom point um, and we'll go down 8 mil. Uh, there's a pin we're going to draw in a second, which will go in there. So that's how we're going to do this. So we'll click OK. Um, what I'll do now is I'm going to draw a basic uh, connecting bar between the two objects. Um, and I'll do that by just creating a, a plane here on the top. Uh, it doesn't matter where it is at zero millimeters from the top. And I'll start a two dimensional sketch. And now what we want to do is create a, a, um, a, a rectangle that sort of links these two objects together. It's basically a handle that's going to link them two together. Uh, obviously there isn't one here at the moment. We just have to project it and we'll then work out the uh, tweaks in the assembly. So uh, what we'll do is because we know that um, uh, we'll just draw the rectangle coming straight out here and extrude the handle that way. We know that it's got to go through a point somewhere here in the middle, which will be fine. So we will just draw a rectangle. Uh, the size doesn't really matter. Um, so I'll draw my handle and then I'll I'll then just uh, constrain it so that uh, I need to project the geometry of this top edge and then I'll just make them uh, horizontally uh, so I'll make I'll do a coincident constraint join the two points together so they're the same width uh, I'll click I'll finish it and I'll extrude this piece and I'll just make it uh, five mil thick um, and I will output it as a new solid and we'll click OK. Um, we now need to drill the holes in this piece so that we can line everything up. Um, so we will do another plane zero millimeters from the surface. We'll start a two dimensional sketch on that plane and we're going to want to project uh, this center point here which is already projected and then we'll project the center point of this uh, circle uh, straight there because we're going to put some points on the center point and the center of this circle because we're going to use the drill function again. Finish the sketch and we will use the whole function. Um, we can just use the through all uh, for this object. Uh, keep it at the same diameter and we will also uh, and just check the other features that we're a flat bottomed. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just click OK. So we now need to draw the pin. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over. We'll use the uh, plane that's already activated and visible. So I'll just draw a uh, um, start a two dimensional sketch on that surface. Um, and then I will draw a, well, I'll project the circle, uh, finish the sketch, and then I'm going to extrude. Uh, I'm going to extrude it down to the, uh, and I'll go. Two and I'll extrude it down to the bottom of the hole. So I'll have to come in there, see if I can catch the bottom of the hole. There we go. Um, and uh, I want this as a new solid as well. And uh, we'll click OK. So we've drawn all our parts. Um, and now what we need to do is we need to rename them all. 
um, so that it make, makes life a bit more um, easier when we start looking at the assembly. So solid one is our base. So I'll rename that. So I'll just do a slow, two slow left clicks on it and I'll just create base. Uh, solid two, I'll rename as slide. Solid three, I'll put as our handle. And solid four will be our pin. Now what we need to do is we need to uh, select all four of the bodies by holding down shift and then uh, selecting all four of our solid bodies. Then right click and what we're going to use is we're going to use this uh, option here called make components. This will make individual eye parts from this one model. So we'll select make components. We've got all of our, our, our part, our solid body selected. It's going to go into our, our target tutorial assembly. Um, and then we'll just click next. Uh, you can see here it's going to create our parts for us. Um, and uh, they're going to be output, uh, outputted as standard parts um, and we'll just click OK. And now what we have is we've been brought into the assembly area of Inventor. So the first thing we're going to do uh, when we're in uh, the assembly area of Inventor is just we're just going to come over and save our new assembly. So I'll go save as. Uh, I've got one already saved here. I'm just going to overwrite it. So I'll select it. You can call yours whatever you want to. Um, select save. Uh, for me, I want to replace it. Yes. Then you should get a pop up which will ask you about uh, changes to any uh, and updates. Just select all. Yes to all. Click OK. And now uh, we are ready to move on to creating our motion constraints. You can see we've got all our parts here. And in the next tutorial, I'll show you how we are going to assemble um, this into a working model using our relationships and our motion constraints, and then driving these so that you can create motion within your three-dimensional models. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.